I was reading the scripture and just all of a sudden this message was pouring out. He said, it's just a seat before my eyes, just a sharing of this precious word, precious well of salvation that God has put before us. Chapter 12, verse 3 in Isaiah. Are you there? Yeah. Now I want you to get ready, because when we get done with this one, we're going to go to John chapter 4. So kind of mark your Bible and head up, please get ready. We're going to be doing a lot of reading there. We're going to learn about a precious lady that came to a well, and she met Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, with joy, we'll draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. What a glorious scripture. I'm telling you. This church was built in 1931. I looked it up on Google, so I have my resource. I'll name it right now. For 91 years, and I believe it was a church from the beginning, it has been lifting up the precious name of Jesus Christ. It may have been a Baptist church. It may have been another type of church, but it, I believe it was mostly a Baptist church, and we, we actually, God came in and God purchased it. But they have been lifting up the precious name of Jesus Christ. We have been a wealth of resources to around these people that have come to this neighborhood. So I don't know how many thousands have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ that when they come into this. 4,000 years ago, that sounds like a long time, Jacob, he purchased a plot of land in the Holy Land near Samaria. He purchased it, for the Bible says, for a plot of money. A pot of money. It wasn't even worth adding a few sheep or goats in with it. Just like some money or some type that they had there in that time. If you read about it in chapter 33 of Genesis, you want, just mark it down. Don't go there here because I want to get out of there here in a few minutes. And what first thing that Jacob did, he, he, he built an altar to the glory. And he named this altar El Lobo Israel, which means God, the God of Israel. Who was Israel? God, Israel was Jacob. Remember in chapter 32 of Genesis, uh, Jacob wrestled with an angel. And God said he held on and held on and he touched his hip. And his name was renamed. But the first thing he got when he got a plot of land, when he started having this family, when he started having everything come about him, he says, I got to get a well dug here. Because it's the barren land. He had purchased this land. And then one of the first things he did after that was put all the rope and sacrifice to God. Say, thank you, God. And then he built a well and there was water there. A very deep well. If, if there have been for easy water there, people have thought, you farmers know, if there's an easy water in a place, they'll get it first before they go digging, you know, 150 feet deep. But if you go to the Holy Land of this day, you will look at this well, and it's still there. They built a church upon it, and it's still like 75 feet deep. And I guess, I don't know if they charge you or what, because usually they wind up charging you for a thing, but you can actually go into that line and get a drink from that well that Jacob was, was doing there. Glory to God. You would turn your Bibles now to John chapter 4. There's an event that happens at this well. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank God for all the goodness and love that there is here. Let me pray first. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love and your goodness. I thank you for this word that you give me to share with my brother that we have here. And Lord, I pray that you go out and minister to those this word is ready to receive. And God, I pray for those that are on YouTube. I pray for those who are on Facebook. God, that they would hear this word and come to Christ. For God, you I know you were there. You said, and the day is the day of salvation. And I pray that you would come in and do it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Okay, John 4. Therefore... When Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had made more baptisms than the disciples of John, but Jesus did not baptize any but his disciples. And I'm also reading in the New King James Version, so if I get a picture of these and these now in the Bible, just follow along, please. He, lifted, he left Judah and departed to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. I almost confided my whole text on that one verse, he needed to go to Samaria. Just to take, stop for a second, he needed to go through Samaria. He was going to meet a young lady there. He knew somebody was there at a well that he was going to be there. 
I knew one day that he met me on my front room couch. <laughs> and I got down on my knees and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. It was a wonderful day. And many of you know that place and the thing that will a place. That has happened in this area. We have seen people come to Christ in our church and things. They've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and they have drank of that living water. That is what he's going to talk about here in a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Now he came to the city of Samaria with so, so far, and near the plot of land which Jacob had gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob was well was there, and therefore he was bearing where he was worried for the journey, and thus he set, and it was the sixth hour of the day. It was about noon. It was the hottest part of the day that we have there. Take note of that. And um, a woman of Samaria came to the draw, and Jesus said, Give me a drink. Jesus said, give me a drink. Doesn't that sound kind of rude for somebody who's never seen anybody before? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, God knows how to get a hold of you. Right. God knows how to get your attention. Good, I had a brother who spent most of his time in prison for a majority of his adult life that gave, got, his, got on his knees in his prison cell and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. God got him alone finally. He had been in and out of prison so many times. He had been raised in church. And his mama would drag him down to the Pentecostal Church of God there in French Camp, California, every chance she got. And she heard, he heard the gospel, heard the gospel, heard the gospel, but never yielded to that spirit. And he lived it off and went off into trouble. And he got finally in big trouble where he's doing prison term after prison term. And somehow he, he got in that prison, he finally got alone, he finally got quiet enough to hear that still spirit of God dealing with his heart and says, This is awful. I need to be with that God. And he gave us. Lord, and he gave his heart to Jesus Christ. And he re repented. And he did good. And he did fine. And then and God made a way for him to get out. She so thought he would never get out again. I testified that my brother was kind of... He was the, one, he was the youngest of us, but he's actually the biggest. Uh, and if you have that issue. <laughs> I had looked up at him a little bit. He's about six foot five. He, he, and I, I'm not kidding. He would have scared the undertaker. <laughs> he would have scared him. <laughs> he was actually... He was just... Yes, Kevin, yeah. And he was scared. That's how intimidating he was. You would actually cross the other side of the road. But when God got a hold of his life, yeah. and he knew it was, he's been in and out before, and he knew it. What he did was bury himself in the Word of God and start coming in. God knows how to get a hold of him. Yeah. He, he got me still. He got this old prideful man that I was. And he thought that, that I testified this before. I'm going to do it again because I'll testify about salvation anytime I can. He got my wife got saved. And all of a sudden, she's giving me this lecture. Now, you're going to go to church with me. And I'm saying, okay, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I do this. And then when I, she left him off to Walmart, I said, you know what? I'm fighting a losing argument. Right. I can feel the Holy Spirit dealing with me. And I said, I fell on my knees and I gave Jesus Christ my heart. And God will deal with you. He was fine. Many of you guys are doing the same thing. You sit down today and give your, your heart to the Lord. It's the most wonderful thing. When you do that, the angels celebrate heaven for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't wonder if somebody else made me celebrate because one version of this is that in the presence of the angels or celebration. Who's in the presence? Possibly the saints that went before you. <laughs> Your mom and dad might be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom and God, dad have gone on before me. Let's go on. And Jesus said, uh, give me a drink. And the, our disciples had went on to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said, now, it is, how is it that you being a Jew ask me to drink, being a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritan. Prejudice, prejudice comes up even in the olden days. <laughs> I would say that. It is here today, people, being prejudiced, racist, I don't want to say it's nothing but a trick of the devil. Right. I'm going to give him credit for that. That is one of the things he is doing. One of the things he's been using to tear America apart. Bring up the race card, bringing up all the things of prejudice to this. The Jews here had prejudice to against, against the Samaritans. The Samaritans worshipped one mountain, and the, the Jews actually drew, uh, drew, uh, worshipped in Jerusalem. But that prejudice, they had not have no dealing with it. These people would talk bad about each other, and it just bad, and nothing would ever get solved. Uh, if you just want to go in and study the Samaritans a little bit, you find out they even have to convert the Torah. They had the first four or five books of the Bible ready, but they had they thought the other the Jews had distorted them a little bit, so they, there was a conflict there. It was even full of religious lines. Yeah. Glory to God. And Jesus answered and said, If you know who the gift of God and who 
says this to you, give me a drink. You would ask him, and he would give you the living water. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the woman said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. Well, this deep. Where do you get your living water from? First thing, when you're witnessing to somebody and they're talking to you about Jesus, you're talking to them about Jesus Christ, all of a sudden they look into the natural. How can all this be? How can all this be? Well, I'll tell you, God has a way of revealing himself to you through the Amen. Holy Spirit. He says, and a woman said to him, you have nothing to draw with. How do you get this living water? See, the first, first, first thing people want to do is look at the natural way to this. Well, how can this be possible? How can my sins be forgiven? How can a, a, a man who died 2,000 years ago on a cross give my, forgive my sins? He died on the cross. He made a way. It is prophesied so many times in the Old Testament up to this point in time and give you heart to God. And he made it. And she said to him, Are you greater than our father Jacob, who, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as well as his son and his livestock? Water is a saving issue. Pastor was talking about this today. I thought he was going to preach my whole message. And he wrote this. But the water is the same issue. You can only go three days in the desert without water. Maybe one and a half. I probably my, my family probably couldn't go a half a day. <laughs> and you see little Mariah, she's got to have a, a bottle of water. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> I got the hand, but she always gives me the hand. Man. And Jesus answered her and said, Whosoever shall drink of this water will thirst again, the natural water. But whosoever drinks the water that I should give him shall never thirst for the water shall whosoever shall drink of the water and I will give him will never thirst but the water I shall give him shall become a fountain of water a springing up for everlasting life and the woman said well give me this water that I may not thirst and that it don't have to come here to draw again there was a reason she came at one o'clock in the afternoon every day this lady was a troubled soul and you'll read on here in a verse, and it's going to be revealed to her, that she had much trouble in her marriages, and much trouble in her life, and it's just trouble. And the reason she really had come into the afternoon to draw water was because she was forsaken and pushed back from, from socially for the people there. Right. Normally, when you want to come and bear, carry big buckets of water, you can come early in the morning while it's cool. No, she's got to come at 1 o'clock in the afternoon when nobody else is there. Right. So this is the reason she's coming into that time. So society is already persecuting her. The Samaritans were very standard about their marriage practices. There was about marriage, just as the Jews were, very standard about it. They, were, they kept trying to keep the law that they had, or their versions of it. Glory to God. So Jesus, you know, Jesus knows us all. We all make excuses. I always tell my mom, well, I'll come to church with you someday. I'll come to you know, this. Yeah, I got locked over one day and I said, okay, I'll go. <laughs> so your parents keep asking people. Yeah, keep right. asking. Right. Especially your parents. And everyone that's lost out there, you keep, keep asking those people to come, that were to come. Yes. Glory to God. And this woman answered and Jesus said, Jesus said, go get your husband and come here. And the woman said, I have a husband. And Jesus said, for you, Jesus said, you have, you have said, I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and the one you with now is not your husband, you have spoke truly. When God deals with your heart, when God's tugging at your little heart right now, and you don't feel right with Jesus, and you say something's wrong here, don't try to lie or talk your way out of it, because God knows the very hairs on your head. Right. He knows he's to be able to discern everything down to the marrow of your bones, where the truth of things it is. If you're not right with God and you think this, you think you're going to fool Jesus, that ain't going to happen. He knows it already. Amen. Amen. Just come on, Pastor. Thank you. God, get that on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the woman said to him, I perceive that you are a prophet. And a father that our fathers worshipped at this mountain. And the Jews said, We need to worship in Jerusalem. We're all in worship. And Jesus said, Woman, believe me, the hour coming when you will need to worship in this mountain, nor in Jerusalem. But for, for, for worship the Father. For worship the Father. For worship what you do not know. For we know that we worship the salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and it is now, when the true worshippers shall worship in 
Father, in spirit and truth. Amen. For the worship is seeking of such a worship of Him. God is a spirit, and those who worship Him will worship Him in spirit and truth. And the woman said unto Him, I know the Messiah cometh, and who is Christ. And when He comes, He will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I who speak to you now and he. Amen. This is the first time that Jesus spoke that he is the Christ to someone outside his circle of disciples. This is the very first time that it happened. Up until then, he would do a miracle and he says, go, go to the priest and follow the law, but don't tell about me. Or he would disappear into the crowd and he does the teaching of this. But this was time to, to start his ministry. It was time to be recognized as Christ. And at this point, his disciples came and marveled that he talked with a woman. There's the first question. They marveled that he, a rabbi, a leader of the church, would talk to a, a woman alone with no supervision. What, what do you see? And they are not talking, but none of them asked him about this. And the woman left her water pot, and she, and she ran to the city and said to the men, Come and see a man who told me all things I had ever did. Could this be the Christ? She became the first evangelist. <laughs> All of a sudden, my life has changed. She started testifying to it. And if you go down to, on the verse 37 there, it says, And many of the Samaritans believed because of the word of the woman that testified. He told me all the things that I had did. She testified of his goodness and his love. And she recognized him as the Christ. Glory to God. Amen. I remember when I came to Jesus. And I turned my life over. Went over to Sister Glenda's house and Brother Tom's at the time. And they were sitting there and we were started singing songs. And I, if you guys remember Brother Tom, he was going, he's quite sick at that time. But he was sitting right near me. And his hearing wasn't that good. And he started singing some songs. And he says, you know, Tom, the best song I've ever heard was Amazing Grace. That was the most wonderful song I've ever heard. And it was testifying. And we went around and we started singing the song. And I started singing, what a day it will be when my Jesus I shall see. And the glory of God came down that room. And I thought when I opened my eyes, I was going to be in heaven. I thought the rapture just happened. I said, here we come. Here we go. <laughs> glory to God. And then we're there. Amen. I really want to talk to you now a little bit about that living water. This lady did a fantastic witness to, for this. And people were changed in the time. I was doing a little punch list about the Holy Spirit. And I just went on, I wrote, I kept it, I wrote it down. He says, what does the Holy Spirit do? He's a helper. The Bible tells us that. Right. He abides with you. He will convict you of your sins. He will bring you into Jesus Christ. He is, a, he is a spirit of truth. If you don't know the truth about things, seek the Holy Spirit and guidance. If you're confused about voices that you're hearing or something that or your thoughts, what you're going to do, I'll see how it lines up with, with your, how it lines up with the Bible. The Holy Spirit will lead you in all truths and it will never contradict the Bible. Get in there and read it. And whom he, and the world cannot receive him. They don't understand it. It's an invisible force. He dwells with you. He's going to dwell with you. And who, and he will dwell in you. I remember that part. I think it's in uh, John 14 chapter. It talks about the Holy Spirit comes in you. It also convicts you and says, yep, it also will dwell with you. And, and he also says it will dwell in you. Amen. That's when you come to know Jesus. He's a comforter. He's an ever-present value. He's a power. He helped us in our weakness. He makes intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He searches our hearts and knows the intents of our mind. He is the spirit of truth and the will of God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I couldn't believe this morning. The pastor was just verifying my message for the night. It's in John 7, chapter uh, uh, 37 and 39. In the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood up so stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. Amen. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. King James says, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The other day, when I was kind of upset and felt like the world just crawled down on me, I had just like a, my gut would just knot up. <laughs> So my wife, my wife's laughing at me because she said, "Oh, that's right." <laughs> I was just feeling that pain. I just, and you guys have felt that when you got all upset. 
it's actually talking about the Holy Spirit dwells in your inner core. It is right. your heart. One, one version says heart, one says in your belly. But out of that belly, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it will just flow out of you. And this right. is the Holy Spirit, as Jesus talked about. But did not have been given because he had been glorified at this sense. When did the Holy Spirit come into the believers? John 20, verse 20 and 22. And when he had said this, he showed his hands to the side, and his disciples were glad that they saw it was the Lord. And Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. That is when he does. That is very good. When you get saved, you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in and cleans you all up. But that's not all that the Holy Spirit does for you. Let's go on to my favorite chapters. You're going to see a little story of an old fisherman who was a, 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 just an old fisherman, an old rough soul. I, I, I think it's Peter. I was thinking him as a rough soul out there. Remember when they even come to arrest Jesus Christ? He, he cut, the, cut the, the one servant's, uh, the soldier's ear off. I don't think he was swinging for his ear, though. He took out a sword and was swinging for it. Right. And he's going to tell him, he's this. And he was all, always the roughness. I'll never deny you, Christ. All those other guys will. Like, well, I don't care what you're going to do with John over there. What, what's the matter with him? He had all kinds of problems. He, he had no problem speaking out where he was. But anyway, he was there. And he was does this. And he was went to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And they assembled together and gathered, and commanded them that not depart Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. For he said, You have heard from me, and John truly baptized with water, but I shall baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And you go on down to chapter 8, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall receive witnesses both to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and in other parts of the earth. You shall receive power. Glory to God. This is a silver incident. You get saved. You, the Holy Spirit comes in you and washes you white as snow. It applies the blood to your heart and life. Right. And then when you go in, then you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When did I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I remember this. I came back to the Lord. We're sitting there in the middle of that Baker Street church. And we're having a good time. The Holy Spirit's falling. Everybody's in one of one spirit and one accord and rush the Lord. And I'm sitting back there and Sister Marlene sitting in front of me like she usually was. And there was somebody sitting behind me with us. All of a sudden I started talking into this angelic language. It just started rolling out, rolling out right from my belly. Just coming right up and come. And that, it gives you the strength and the power. There is a lot of hard times coming on Bosco. We have seen the birth pains happening in the world today. Those trends, and it sure seems like those trends, those birth pains are getting closer and closer right. and closer. Amen. And when Jesus Christ comes, he's going to take us out of this place. Amen. I am going to tell you, Amen. Amen. you need to seek the Holy Spirit. You need to seek him. He gives you the power and the glory of God. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus, glory to you, God. Thank you, Lord. In chapter 2 it says, On the day of Pentecost had come to full, they were all in one accord in one place. Don't you know we are all in one accord right now? Amen. We're in all in one place right now. This will be the most wonderful time when you receive that baptism. You've got, you've got Jesus in you. You've got the Holy Spirit in you. That baptism is just overflowing and come, the Holy Spirit comes out upon you and is baptizes you and gives you strength and power. It gives you the love and goodness. It helps you overcome things that you never thought you had done. It helps you to stand up here and give a talk and testimonies where you thought you could never do it. It helps people play the piano that never thought they could play the piano. It helps people play a guitar and sing a song you thought they'd never be able to play a song on. It helps people tell people about Jesus Christ. I've been, I've been accused of being single-minded here lately. Because all the problems that come in is I want us just want to know, are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ? <laughs> are you saved? Do you want to know Jesus Christ? I'm going to tell you how you get to know Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit can do. You. Give you the wisdom and guidance. And there are gifts of the Spirit that was talk, that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. Get in there and study them. Amen. God is you really using what it is. God has used me in different spirits. He has given me words of wisdom at times. He has given me words of knowledge at times. All according to whatever spirit needs me to be done. He has used me in, in giving tongues of a, of a, a message coming out. 
He's even giving me part of the interpretation, but I've been afraid to let it out. I said, sorry, Lord, I had to get down and repent. <laughs> but God is there. And God is the most wonderful thing. And those spirit and those things, they will help you guide and glow. Do you want that power in your life? Do you want those things? Because a lot of us have, all, have been stuck in the same rut for a long time. We've got the same failures that are coming up upon us. And we need a little something extra. We need to pray down and get down. And let the Holy Spirit come in if daily if you want to. Then it's there. You can be refilled. You don't get it one time and then you never speak in tongues again or you never worship in the spirit language that you have. One of the most wonderful times I've ever had. It's not being in church. It's when I get alone by myself and I start lifting up the name of Jesus Christ in my house and the Spirit comes down and He just worships and fills and fills me and edifies me and He fills me up and turns and encourages me. That is for you. That is a promise of the Father. He said you will sell and receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Upon you. He is in you already because you're saved. You're going to go to heaven. But you need to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. He, he wanted the Holy Spirit. Don't we just settle for this because God's got a gift of strength that's going to give you. We have times right now that it's just terrible with the world. And we're going to face things we don't know. We need guidance and wisdom that we need. And I'm going to get, to get down and pray and receive the Holy Spirit in here. He's going to want to react to you. He's going to want to react to you. You don't know Jesus Christ as you see him. That's it, brother. Yes. Amen. That's it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. We'll be right here right now. Let's just all stand if you can. Just stand with your name. First off, you got to know Jesus, your Savior. If you're here and you're lost, that young lady at the well was lost, but she came to the well and she came to know Jesus Christ. Just raise your hand and say, I need to know Jesus right now. I need to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just check yourself. Check yourself. Glory to God. The famous words of my grandma, check yourself. Am I lying about myself? Am I stealing to myself? Do I not know Jesus Christ my Savior? God wants to do one thing right now. I'm not going to lay hands on you. What we're going to do just like they did in the, in, in, the, in the upper room. We're all going to lift our praises and names up to Jesus Christ. We're going to give it a big old shout of hallelujah. We're going to raise the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to
John said that when the Messiah comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dolores, Charlie, Joe, me, Nathan, Randy. Ooh. 
Yes, Caden. Yes, Caden. Tom, Shauna. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, I got Shauna. Oh. I got Shauna. Yeah. Linda. <laughs> Linda. 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 Yes, Linda. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. At least I don't call you, well, what, Rick? <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.